Ecological training. It's the biggest change to jiu-jitsu that completely goes against what the founders set out to build. No running around the room, no bowing to pictures on the wall, and no drilling. Huh? I first heard about this when I found a fellow YouTuber's video about when he went to Greg Souter's gym. And I gotta say, it piqued my interest. But in the background, I found a familiar gym owner, Hayden, who happened to own a gym near me, and guess what? He completely believes in this approach. And right away, I started getting my ass whooped with this new training. Hayden had the class set up into games, and with these games, he gave you clear constraints and guidelines on what you were supposed to do, but ultimately, he left it up to you on how you want to proceed. And work to destabilize the top person. Your job is to destabilize them to their hands or to their hips. Oh, you're not allowed to come up. You're not allowed to finish your submission. This game was interesting because you had to pass standing, but it stinks for me because it's an easy entry onto the legs. However, one of his constraints is that he's not allowed to submit me, so finally, I can practice some leg locks without having my knee explode. I already can feel the benefits of ecological training because I get to go in different positions and try new attacks instead of just being a complacent dummy. But then I start backtracking that thought when I'm stuck in a fully locked in submission and he's not allowed to tap me. How much do I really learn from this if I'm going to be stuck the entire round? I did make sure to ask him that later so stay tuned for the interview. Three hours later I was finally able to escape, hang out some revenge with an angle lock, fully knowing he couldn't submit me, but I could do it to him. The training, constraints, and setups were starting to make some more sense to me. This training was opening my mind on new possibilities that I could attack from or defend from, which became the main focus of the next game, where they started with a limb, but you weren't allowed to submit until you could at least secure a triangle. Now before I show some more great footage of me, I want you guys to know that I partnered up with DraftKings before UFC 300. I've been a huge fan of all physical sports and been watching MMA since the Pride era. With the crazy card coming this April, DraftKings Sportsbooks will bring you closer to the action. Any new customers that sign up with code Tyler Spangler will get $150 in bonus bets if you bet at least $5. Now I've used betting sites before, but DraftKings makes it so much easier with a convenient interface and clear payouts, especially on their mobile app. And while you definitely should do your own research, I already have my choices made for the card including picks like Kayla Harrison being brand new to the UFC, beating Holly Holm, and Justin Gaethje crushing Max Holloway. However, if you're confident and want a shot at bigger payout, you can use your $150 in bonus bets for same game parlays, combine multiple bets, and choose how the fighter will win. If sports betting is not yet available in your state, don't worry, you can still join in on all the fun with DraftKings Daily Fantasy and have a shot to win cash prizes. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. New customers use promo code Tyler Spangler, bet just $5 on any wager and get $150 in bonus bets instantly. Getting back to the action, I'm now stuck on bottom after I just submitted Hayden with a triangle, and I'm forced to try and fight him off without him getting a triangle locked up on me. This game sets up the expectation that you need to have more control before going for attacks. We all know we've been in that position where we've had an armbar and completely lost it, so creating a triangle is a great backup option. And if you haven't picked up a pattern yet, control is the name of the game, especially in this third one. My job as the top person is to work to put the bottom person on their back, clear their feet, deny connections from the bottom person with their feet and their hands as best I can, get as close to them as I can. I cannot go chest to chest or double knees down. So we were revisiting the first game, except for this time, the bottom guy could actually win by working up or sweeping, and the top guy was just looking for control. Now I could go back to my bread and butter of just wrestling up. Then I could treat Hayden like my younger brother, never allowing him a win, but I still got to work my control the entire time. That's payback for holding me in the knee bar. And this training is really fun for me, but I'm a black belt and I already know most of the techniques in jiu-jitsu. But I had to get the opinion of a white belt to see if they actually enjoyed it as well. At the beginning it was difficult and it was frustrating, but now it clicks and it makes sense. And so I focus on these games and the movements differently than I maybe before because I actually have resistance now. I think this type of training shows you the openings a lot faster. There's the true movement. There's various ways that you can get to it or you've got to watch out for other things like, oh, I kept giving up the, the arm because they rotated. It's all I've known, but I love it. So it's clear to me that even the white belts enjoy this training method, and it must work well for her as she's able to train with male purple belts without getting beat up the entire time. But a competition gym that doesn't do any wrestling just doesn't speak to me, so I was super happy to see that Hayden incorporates wrestling into his games. You needed to clear your head, then establish a strong connection. I have no idea why we're trying to break your head out of there, it's not like anyone would attack this. Then for the second game, we already had the single leg, but we had to try and finish it. And this round had a lot more intensity. <laughs> nice. 
but new styles of training are a dime a dozen. What is it actually like rolling with these methods? The first thing I can say is that after a round of doing all these games, you're gonna go into the rolling naturally more tired from working. And when you're tired, submissions become that much harder and control becomes that much more important. I tried for a key team with my black belt partner but just couldn't get it done so I had to switch off into control so I could sweep them and then get back to a dominant position. I naturally like body locks and chest to chest control but something in the back of my head said I had to change it up so I could follow Hayden's methods. So I lifted one of my feet up to try and work that tricopod camping but instead this just gave him an easy entry into single leg X. My partner Kaiser understood the assignment of trying to destabilize me and put my hands on the mat and I would have loved to have kept my weight on top of him but my heel was in danger so I had to give it up. Now it was my turn to try and do some destabilizing on my own. Well at least that's what I told myself until I remembered the second part of Hayden's game is that I could wrestle up to try and get out from underneath. But I think he tricked me with that one because I'm telling you after that training I was too tired and he stayed one step ahead of me the entire time. And I didn't realize this, but I guess I ordered a backpack from Kazakhstan because he was on my back for the longest amount of time. However, if you invest in my back escape strategies, by holding onto the heel and driving it up, I'm almost always able to escape, even if they're slamming a choke onto me. At this point, I'm slamming my weight into him and holding him with a body lock, but I'm still working on perfecting this new passing system, so I'm not quite able to get it done to him, and I just jump for a guillotine, completely forgetting my arms are gassed. He does a nice job to block it with his shoulder, but I do manage to get my hand in. Maybe next time I'll actually be able to finish this one. Great job by him, but I had to go with the final boss to see if this training actually worked. And I started off in style, knowing he wanted to clear the head. I got the takedown part of training all figured out, and I'm applying the same ideas from the games into trying to pass his half guard by staying high on my feet while pressuring him forward, looking for hip connection. My golden rule in trying to destroy their connections is to be driving forward with your head. It's the strongest wedge you have between you and your opponent. But I break my own rule going for another guillotine and working against the fundamentals Hayden was trying to show. This then gives him the opportunity to strip my arm off the back of his head and I can't get my head back to where it was before. Then he has another opportunity to start diving in my leg and destabilize me, putting me to my hip just like in the games earlier. We get in a leg lock shootout where he's trying to attack me with a calf slicer but I'm looking for the toe hold until he's able to start pulling his own foot back. Then he gets to his back and starts to tilt me over and it looks like my calf is about to rip from my body. By not skipping leg day and pushing with my other leg against him, I'm able to create just enough space where I'll be able to live another day. But I willingly go into the same shootout we just did before as I want the toe hold, but the consequences this time around were much worse as he scoops over the ankle, then over to the heel, and instead of rolling through and fighting it, I tap. This training method is extremely fun to me. I love that when I'm on the mat, even during class, I'm still getting work in instead of being a training dummy for my partner half the time. But I did ask Hayden a few questions about this. Is this for every level or is this just for higher level belts? Get even more out of it at the lowest level. They don't even understand how grappling feels when like somebody else grabs them and tries to control them. And then you're explaining a bunch of steps that they have to try to remember and make work on somebody and they're probably not resisting them when they're practicing it. Then they practice it live eventually and then they can't remember the steps and it doesn't work because the other person moves differently. Instead of teaching them a bunch of fundamental moves, teach them how to play the game. How do we grapple? How do we stay on top and hold somebody down? If you're doing a game and someone's caught in a knee bar, is this an effective game when they can't tap? Yes, if they were allowed to submit, they would just get the tap right away, but they wouldn't develop that control from that submission. Now Hayden could talk on this training for hours, but I'm already sold. You're not going to be seeing me going to do any more drilling unless I'm absolutely forced to. I instantly can feel this is a much better use of my mat time, and I think you will as well.